We are 100% in agreement on that. I, I tell you what I was, I was doing last night. I couldn't sleep. I was, you know, online on my phone like you are right now. And I had watched a sparring session that was just done here recently in, in the last week or so. Uh, Dillashaw? No, Connor okay. box, a, a Connor box, and, and Connor looked like a good boxer. He looked like a good boxer, but he didn't look like the best boxer in the world. And then right underneath that uh, link or that that YouTube video was a video of the gentleman Chris Van Herden, who's a former 147 pound boxing world champ from South Africa that Connor sparred with last year. And they, they, he did an interview about the sparring, and the, and and he was he was like, hey, I hadn't trained in a month, but I saw that I was getting a chance to put my skill set up against Connor's skill set, and it's what we all think about. We think, of course, the boxer is supposed to be a better stand up boxer than the MMA guy, and he went six rounds with Connor, and he said Connor's a good boxer. He said he is a good boxer. This was in May of last year. But he also said he's not going to beat Floyd. He's not going to beat any of the top 10 guys in the sport. That's ridiculous. And that goes to your point of how ridiculous that is. Yeah. And, and, you know, our overwhelming point is, so what? We want to see the contest. If these two guys want to go out and compete, we want to see it. So give us what we want. To act like Connor. Uh, shouldn't be given the opportunity if it's what the fans want and both fighters want to do it. Sure, he should. To act as though Connor should be given a chance to win that fight is an embarrassment to boxing. That is box. That is people saying we don't respect boxing because if you're bringing in a guy who's never done this professionally against a guy who's never lost professionally, and you think the the guy that's never done it can win, it means you don't respect our sport. So. Yes, the proof's in the pudding. He got in the ring. He did some sparring, but that was May of last year. Let him grow. Let him get better. Let him work on some stuff. Let Floyd get a little bit older and hopefully slow down, though there's no signs of that happening. But allow those talking points to come in and allow people to to hedge their bets and make plans for their party and buy the pay-per-view. I don't think that anybody should attempt to discredit Connor or by the outcome of this match. He should not win. It's a sport that he does not do. And if he's willing to go out and compete, he gets courage points from everybody, right? He gets he gets a pat on the back for everybody, and that's where it ends, regardless of the outcome here, which better be fast and devastating and against him for the sake of the integrity of boxing. Floyd, on the other hand, has a lot of pressure. Floyd needs to go out and put him away in one round. In what it better be in thirty seconds. But if Connor even makes it out of the first round, Connor wins absolutely. And people cannot get lost on this. This is not Connor's sport. This is not what Connor does. This is what Floyd does. This is Floyd's sport. He needs to put him away. This is the best in one sport versus a guy who's never done it. That's your average Joe Good athlete taking on LeBron and beating him, taking on McEnroe, taking on Tiger Woods and beating them in their sport, going out and racing against Dale Earnhardt Jr. when the guy's never raced a car before. It's ridiculous, and Earnhardt had better win. And nobody in those other contests that I just laid out would give a guy a chance. But people are giving Connor a chance against Floyd. And that is a complete dis- it is showing what people think of boxing. They think that it's a fringe, fake, discredited sport. And that is the bigger story here. I tell you what, it, I agree 100% with you that Connor should lose that fight. And every point you have there, I'll be rooting for him. I'll be rooting for him too. I'll be rooting for him. I'll pay the, I'll pay whatever, whatever they pay, whatever they charge. I'll pay and I'll be rooting for him. Yeah, yeah, um, I'll, I'll contribute my money to that purse. I'll, I'll do everything I can. We'll talk about it on the show. We'll build that as, uh, up as much as we can. But I, I'm going to lay the groundwork now. This isn't MMA versus boxing, and now we settle the score on which one is. But it's none of those things. It's a contest that two guys want to go into. Connor is in a no-lose situation. As many people that are going to try to smear this in his face when it's done, they're just wrong. He should lose. He should not be willing to do it. He should not even have the courage to go and try, but he does. It's a win for Connor. Everybody, 
everybody listening to this show has a car, and you all want a different car. That's true, too. Guys, do not buy a car, new or used, without checking out True Car. You can download the app to your phone. If you're at a desktop, go to www.truecar.com. Here's how it works. Go in virtually over the Internet and build the car you want. Year, make, model, color. Type in your zip code and find out what people in your area paid for that exact same car. At that point, moving forward, you will be connected and work directly with a True Car certified dealer. They will have the car. Most people are saving almost $4,000 off of the MSRP, there is over 13,000 true car certified dealerships in this country. No more seeing an ad, getting down to the dealership, spending the day and sometimes the weekend down there, and leaving in a stripped down version of the car that you fell in love with because the ad was wrong. Get the app today so when you are ready, you have it. If you're at a desktop and that time is now, www.truecar.com. True Car, tell a friend. Hey everyone, this is Sean Wheelock inviting you to check out our new MMA podcast, Sean Funky and the Baddest Man, right here on Podcast One. Every week I'll be with welterweight titleist Ben Funky Askren and the baddest man on the planet, Joe Warren, to take you inside the sport of MMA. So join us every Wednesday for all new episodes of Sean Funky and the Baddest Man. Download and listen at PodcastOne.com, the Podcast One app, and subscribe on iTunes. You're welcome. You're welcome. With Jail Sonnen. Does King Mo know you jinxed his Olympic bid? Yes, he does. He does. Yes, he does. Go ahead and speak on that. King Mo was wrestling uh, Andy Robot in the final wrestle off. The, the second match. It was best two out of three. He had already won the first one. For the 2008 Olympic team. They were in the third match, actually. It was one apiece. They were out there in the, in the third, and uh, Mo was ahead. And there was no time left. I mean, there was seconds. Minute. No, 45 wait. seconds. Oh, I feel like there was. I wanted to say more like eight, nine seconds. Wasn't it that, that short? I feel like, I mean, time was up. And I sent Mo a text. Congrats. I want to be the first to congratulate him. Right? Congrats. Robot turns him. Makes the team. I jinxed him. That's the whole story. You did jinx him. But years later, at some point, he he, he knew that. He got that text. He yeah. was like, you're an idiot. No, no. He thought it was great. He thought it was funny. You know, Mo had, uh, he had one one foot out already. And, uh, you know, he was the man in wrestling. He was he was the man at 96 kilograms. And then he, he couldn't quite get past Cormier. Really close matches. But Cormier w- would always win. Mo goes down to 85 kilograms and was a lock. And uh, Robot came out of nowhere. Now, Vo- Robot was always very good and very respected, but he was not supposed to be the guy. You know, you had Herbert in that way. He just, it was a really tough weight. And uh, Robot came out of nowhere, surprised everybody. And Robot had beaten Mo the year before for the world. He pinned him, turned him in a chest lock, stepped over and pinned him. So Robot was the only guy that believed he could win, but that was the only guy he needed to believe he could win. And, and he went out and did. But, yeah, I sent him that text, that congrats. Right as time was running down, boom, robot turns him. Yeah, buddy. So what do you got? What are you thinking? So we got a big show in, in Kinky Key tomorrow. I thought that the press tour for uh, the Bellator pay-per-view uh, has really been off the charts. It, it has not ceased to impress me at any of the media we've done today. Uh, I mean, we've been over to Howard Stern. I've never been on Howard Stern before. Uh, just so many opportunities that they have, so much respect, so much ground that Bellator has gained and, you know, to go out and go into pay-per-view, I think is exciting. I'm a pay-per-view guy. I don't fully understand television ratings and, and how that works and how you manipulate that. Other than you, you let people know and trying to learn that, but I'm new to pay-per-view. Daddy's back on pay-per-view. I'm the king of pay-per-view. That's where I belong. But to find out the media opportunities that Bellator has access to, Joel, we've been all over the city, man. Really quite impressive by well, them, not well, by us. I mean, we, we, we're just tag-alongs, but wow. Well, you were really, really impressive, first off. Uh, last week, I had a bunch of questions from the fans, and one of the, one of the questions, once they announced that fight, was, hey, how are they going to market this fight? Uh, both of you guys, I mean, you have a bunch of fights that, that the UFC doesn't own, but Vanderlei has very few. So how are they going to use that content? They had different questions about that. And I said, 
Uh, put a mic in Chael's face. You'll be all right. Yeah, it's not rocket science. You don't always have to have B-roll in, in old fights. I mean, there's pretty, plenty of clips that you can build up. You know, there, there's a big demand for the entire card. And uh, it's flattering to be on top of the bill. But the reality is Mitrion and Fedor is going to bring in a lot of attention. Michael Chandler is going to bring in a lot of attention. Vandalay coming back after being out of the sport for so long is going to bring in a lot of attention. And I think that we've experienced some of that just when we've been out here, just for the opportunities that we've had and the exposure that we've had. And, uh, you know, so there, there's a lot that goes into it. And the guy on top of the bill, so it's me in this case, always gets the credit. But I've been the guy that's not on top of the bill that was still selling the pay-per-views, and I've kind of got, hey, wait a minute, you, got, you guys have this formula wrong. This is a group effort, and, you know, the fans got to get behind. There's a lot of things that need to happen. And watching Bellator organize that... I've just been impressed, man. I just thought they, I'm really impressed. They're going to New York. It's the media capital of the world. And again, we've seen that. We've seen all the media. We've seen the population. And, and I'll tell you what, the Russian contingency that's on the East Coast that is pining to see Fedor come out here and fight has surprised me.